I recently added CI to project Happium. Uh, so even though now the solution will be available in, in Happium, but I think if you're curious to know how I, how I solve this, and if you're curious to know the process, uh, then continue and watch this video. If you're only interested to see the, see the solution, I think you can just look at project Happium. So the way I did it is, the first thing I did was go to actions and create a new workflow. Now you can see I already have Java CI with Maven, but let's say if you want to create it for the first time. Um, this is the one build and test a Java project with Apache Maven. This is what we want. So set up this workflow. Um, it tells that this process will trigger every time you're trying to do a push on the main branch, or if you're trying to create a pull request where the target branch is main. Now this will not be allowed, uh, but this is what we are, we are curious uh, to work upon. The job will run on, on Ubuntu. Um, first it will check out the code, then it will set up a JDK, which is 11, which by the way is different than the JDK that we have set up in our project. Um, so it will create some issues, but we will solve it along the way. Let's see, uh, XML. So for example, you can see that we have set up our JDK at 1.8. Let me increase the font size a bit. Uh, let me also increase the font size a bit, otherwise it's too small. Um, and after this, we are just running a build maven command. So I've changed nothing here, and let's see what, what happens when we try to run this. So commit directly to the main branch. Now we want to create a new branch. Let's call it bash9. Create pull request. And let's see what happens. So now it's trying to run this and we will have some failures and let's see what why those failures are um, yeah Yep, and you can see we have some failures. And if we go up, let's go up, up, up. Um, you'll see, for example, we are running tasks on browser stack, but we start getting failures that unable to parse remote response, authorization required, uh, boom, 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 Android driver. And what was happening was, Let's look at the line. Assert that I wanted to use a second login. Uh, let's see. This login. Line 31 in the login class, right? Then if you go in line 31 in login class, you will see that it failed when you are trying to create a driver. And now I know because uh, it took me some time to figure it out. But actually what was happening was when we were trying to create an Android driver, uh, uh, not here, when we were trying to create capabilities, the place where it was failing was it was trying to go to browser stack and it was trying to get a username and a key which did not exist. I mean, as you can see, we are not passing any, uh, we are not passing any, where is it? Let's go. In the file, workflow file, in this file, we're not passing any environment variables. So the first thing that we needed to do was to set up some environment variables as secrets. And the second thing that we need to do was specify them here. Now, uh, once I figured out that I was not passing on secrets, the first thing that I did was I went to settings and I went to secrets and I added two secret keys, like a browser stack key, browser stack username, and these are my browser stack uh, key and, and usernames. Uh, you can set, set it with your own IDs, but you can still see that even though we have created the secrets, we are not passing them in, uh, let's go, we are not passing them in our, in our job. So let's go back, let's go to, Patch nine, create maven. And if I go again here, let's go back. 
So I mean the first thing that I was missing was adding the secrets itself. So first I one I added the secrets and two then I added those environment variables. And these are the environment variables that we would need. Uh, I did some quick Google search to see how to pass on environment variables and I think uh, this was one of the links from github which showed us that you know you can pass on our secrets like this. So you can set the secrets like this and you can pass the environment secrets like this and this is what we're doing now. So we're going to pass these environment secrets and uh, in fact first we need to pass the secrets and then we need to run, run the job may even be package file palm xml right and let's commit this start commit uh, commit directly to the patch commit changes so now what happens is it will try to run this patch again let's go back details And this time it should run the test. Let's see. And meanwhile, when it is running the test, maybe I can show you the changes that I made. So I had these capabilities where I'm getting browser stack dot user. Yeah, and by the way, uh, GitHub secrets does not allow you to add secrets with, with dots. So for example, in the beginning I was trying to do like this and when I went to let's say secrets let's say github happy M. so my first approach was to add secrets like this uh, secrets new repository secret and when I tried to give this it did not allow me so for example it will tell you um, fail to add a secret secret names can only contain alphanumeric characters or underscores and that is the reason why i am giving uh, the secret uh, like this and not exactly how it is specified in browser stack um yeah so we i changed these two values so now i'm getting these from environment when you're running from localhost it will get this value from a localhost when you're running from browser stack it will take this value from the browser stack um this is another thing which i will show you later so what we will do is when we're running test from ci we will get the build name which will be a pull request name uh, it's not set up right now but i will show you uh, in just few minutes and when you're running from the local host then this value is specified as from local host so let's go back and see uh, what happened so this time our build ran and let's see let's come down let's come down let's come down yeah and you are seeing some errors here for example an illegal reflective access operation has occurred and the, the reason why we're getting this error is because uh, in this CI job if you look at the file in this CI job we have specified Java version 11 but actually the Java version that you're using in our POM file is Java version 8 uh, but we will, we will see how to fix that later for now let's go back let's look at this build and what we can see is apart from this error apart from this error now we have uh, we have a proper uh, test login we have a browser stack it says the build name is localhost because we did not pass any build name so even though we ran it from ci it is saying build name is from localhost so we will fix that in a minute uh, let's go but for all other things uh, we can see the tests have run successfully and there are no other problems here uh, so we ran 10, 10 tests one failed this is like an intentional failure and everything else seems to be 
working fine. Let's just check. So if you look in from localhost, uh, two minutes ago, you can see we ran all these tests. So let's fix two more things. Uh, one is to uh, fix this error that we saw. So one, let's fix this error, which we saw in the beginning about illegal reflective access. And second, let's try to fix this host. Uh, and instead of saying localhost, instead of saying localhost, let's pass it on as uh, the name of the pull request. So let's go to the file. Workflow files, change. Let's change Java version to 8. Let's call it JDK 8. And instead of saying Maven build package, let's pass on uh, the browser stack build name. So let's do this. So Maven, in fact, let's first clean. Uh, Maven clean. And D, let's copy this from stack and build name, and this is equals to uh, let's keep it like this and pass on this branch name. Uh, okay, by the way, this is also something which I just did Google search how to get the build name, how to get the branch name. Uh, and now let's do commit, commit to this patch and let's see again what happens. Uh, so this is the latest patch. Let's click on details. And maybe meanwhile, it's also good to mention that in the beginning when I was trying to set this up, I tried to look into APM site. Uh, and see if something is mentioned about integrating with CI CD tools with GitHub uh, actions, but I could not find anything here. So for example, when it come to action or GitHub, nothing was mentioned. Uh, you can, for example, see Circle CI, uh, Jenkins, Team City, and I mean also what I saw was in most of the cases, uh, the solutions are to use plugins, Jenkins plugins, Team City plugins, Bamboo plugins, so forth, so forth, so on. And in the solution that we are building, we're not going to use any plugins. So let's see, uh, it ran the test. Uh, let's see, let's see. You can see the build name is, is now the name of the pull request. And the error that we saw somewhere just after the test, it's gone. Because now we're using the same JDK version 8 uh, as what we're using in our local host. And by the way, I'm thinking if, if I would have used uh, Docker for this, then all this problem would not have exist. You know, then you could have specified all these things in, in a Docker uh, container, Docker image. And then, yeah, but that's something for another, another day. So let's see. So now we can see instead of running on localhost, it's actually running on refs pulse 124 merge, which is the name of the branch, name of the PR that we created and you can see the name of the test class uh, the name of the test uh, if the test fails you also get a, uh, a reason white field and you can see it's like intentionally i'm giving wrong message wrong expected message when the real message is this i will also fix this because otherwise our build will keep on failing but for now let's see uh, so everything seems to be going good. In browser stack now we actually have a build name which is name of our PR. The, the tests are running good. Uh, the past are passed. The failed are failed. We get the right reasons. So everything seems to be in order. Let's go back. Uh, and So I think the only thing that we need to fix now is that failing test. But probably before that, maybe I think I should also mention something interesting is uh, you can see I'm using I'm using environment variables to pass browser stack uh, user and browser stack key. But for browser stack build name, uh, I'm not using environment variables. I'm using configuration. And the interesting thing is, since I'm using type safe, what type safe does is 
we have this environment config class where it first loads properties from system properties and then from application config. So what's happening is when we're running it from the local host, we, we get the value as from local host. But when we're running it from CI, uh, when we're running it from CI, since we are overriding this value, uh, your file here, since we are overriding this property from, from command line, that's the value that we are passing it on. And that is the reason why we are able to use, for example, config get string, and it still gives us the value from the from the CI and not from localhost. Uh, I could have done the same for same for this, but well, it's not a good practice to store your username and key in your configuration. It's a good practice practice to store them as environment variables. So that's the reason you know we keep it like this. Um, yeah, so I think the only thing that we need to fix now is our failing test. So let's do that. And to add a badge is very easy. All we have to do is go to readme file, copy status badge. And here you can see that JavaCI with me is now passing. Awesome. Uh, okay, let's open Visual Studio Code. Read me file and CI badge and git push git push setup stream uh, let's create pull request create pull request only one file changed. Yep, we only add a patch. Let's crash and merge. And I think now we are good to, uh, uh, you know, merge, uh, merge this job because everything seems to, seems to be working well. All checks are passed. This patch is no conflicts, no unresolved conversations. So let's just crash and merge it. Question March. And if you go to code now, we should have two workflows. So this is our published workflow, and this is what we created just now. And with this, we can run our test in CI. We could pass our secrets in a proper way, not making them a part of configuration. We could use the build name, which is the name of the branch. Uh, yeah, pass it in, in an Maven clean command. So that if you're running it from localhost, the test will show running as localhost. When you're running it from a branch, they will show running it from a branch. And from this moment onwards, I expect that if I create a branch, uh, you know, uh, the branch name should reflect here. So let's try. And in fact, what's happening is now it has triggered the main main branch test because. Uh, why? Because every time you push something on main, well, it creates a test. When you create a pull request, it, it triggers the job. And this is exactly what you want. So I think it's it's going pretty good. Uh, so I think that's it. Um, with this, we have covered how to do CI of APM on browser stack using GitHub Actions, which we could not find on uh, browser stack's uh, site like on the Jenkins, Team City, Bamboo, etc. Uh, we're not storing our configuration. We're not storing our secrets in configuration, which is, by the way, what I see most people doing. Most of them are storing, you know, their secrets as part of configuration files. So uh, I hope you, you learned something from it and it shows you, you know, how everything is working and not just the, the final solution, but also the process of fixing it. So that's it. Thank you. Bye-bye.